lenses really are a, a marvel of engineering and they are arguably one of the most important aspects of a camera because they allow cameras to be efficient and to capture light and focus light and record light in a way that allows us to very quickly push a shutter and record videos and images. And what we've, we saw is that because of that lens, because of that efficiency that it affords in terms of how much light comes in, is there's somewhat of a price to be paid. Although it sort of depends on how you think about it. Some people really like that you can blur out parts of the image because it's creative and it creates this nice effect. From a computer vision perspective, it might be considered a nuisance because things that are blurry are harder to reason about, obviously. And what I want to do in this last little bit is just sort of touch on the quantification of what's called depth of focus. What given a particular aperture, a, a, a particular focal length, a particular lens to sensor distance, what can you assume will be in focus in your scene? And you can imagine why that is. You might favor something, let's say you're building a self-driving car that has a really wide depth of focus because you really care about things being in focus from a pedestrian right in front of your car to having to reason about a street sign. On the other hand, if you're doing something like face recognition and you know the person's near the camera, maybe you don't care about depth of focus and maybe you, because you assume that the person will always be in focus. And so I just want to quantify a little bit how we can reason about these things. So let me define a few things. Let me start with the hyperfocal distance. So the hyperfocal distance here, Z sub H, is defined to be as the ratio of the focal length squared, remember that the focal length is now we're distinguishing from the lens to sensor distance, divided by the F number, which is the ratio of the focal length and the lens diameter, that was the big R in the previous uh, segment, times the so-called circle of confusion. That's basically how big is a pixel. And that'll tell you when you have something that is blurry. So this hyperfocal distance is, has to do with the camera's intrinsic properties. Okay? Now, once I know this hyperfocal uh, distance, which I can determine by just telling me what the focal length and the F number is, ratio of focal length to lens diameter, I can then tell you what your range of focus will be. And I'm going to quantify that by two things. What is the point of uh, near distance? So that is, what is the closest thing that will be in focus? And what is the point of far distance? What is the furthest thing that will be in focus. So if I have a really wide field of, uh, uh, a really a long depth of focus, well then it'll go from zero in near depth, a near distance, everything that is right next to me, to infinity. And if I have a narrow, well then it'll be one meter to two meters will be in focus. And that's going to allow us, based on the intrinsic properties of the lenses, to determine what we can expect in terms of depth of focus um, in our image. Okay, so let me define the near distance to be the ratio of Z, that's how far your subject is, uh, times the hyperfocal distance divided by the sum of those two components. And the far distance is Z times the hyperfocal distance, the same, and the denominator now is ZH minus Z. Again, ZH is the hyperfocal distance. And so these, these equations don't really mean anything, so we can, we can sort of get some intuition by looking at this table here. So what I'm showing you in each of the columns are for a subject that is at a distance z equals 1, z equals 5, z equals 10, and z equals 20 for some standard camera, like a 35 millimeter camera with a relatively standard aperture. Okay, so I fixed the intrinsic parameters here. And I'm going to, do, I'm going to change now the f number. So the focal length will stay fixed. I'm going to change the f number, which you see all the way here, from an f over 1.4, this is the standard camera notation, means it's a large aperture, to an f number of f over 32, which means it's a small aperture. It's a little confusing, but notice that the number there is in the denominator. So a small number corresponds to a large aperture, and a large number corresponds to a small aperture. And what I'm showing you in each of these columns for a distance of z equals 20, 10, 5, and 1 is the near and far distance. So, for example, let's go to a distance of, say, 5 meters. Okay? And if I have a large aperture, what do we expect? A narrow depth of focus, because the, the bigger the aperture, the more blurry things will be. And that's, in fact, what you see. You see that for something focused at 5 meters, the depth of focus is, say, 4.4 meters to 5.8 meters, relatively narrow depth of focus. 
On the other hand, if I go all the way down here to a small aperture at the bottom, um, with say an F number of f over 22, well then I'm at, at perfect focus at 1.9 meters all the way to infinity. Yeah, everything's in focus. Now, what was the price I paid for that? Smaller aperture. Smaller aperture means what? Less light. So maybe that has some consequences downstream that I have less light in my center. We'll talk about that later on. Similarly, notice that the depth of focus depends on how far the subject is. So here, for example, with a fixed f number of f over 8, then at a distance of uh, z equals 20, say, I've got a pretty wide field of view. I'm from 6 meters through my 20 meter focus point all the way out to infinity. Fantastic. Really de wide depth of focus. But at something nearby, at say z equals 1, well then my depth of focus is only 1 meter, 0.9 meters to 1.1. Very, very narrow. So two things are going on here. Obviously, the size of the aperture, the f number, dictates in the rows here your depth of focus. Uh, the smaller the aperture, the bigger depth of focus, but less light. The larger the aperture, the narrower depth of focus, but lots of light streaming in. And of course, what, what else dictates it is how far am I from the subject. The further I am, the, the, the longer my depth of focus will be, and the closer I am, the narrower it, it will be. All right, we're starting to get to having all the pieces we really need to understand the full imaging model. At this point, we have perspective projection under a camera, a pinhole camera, camera obscura. We have a lens, so we can actually understand at least some aspect of a complex image with differences in blurring. And we have this notion of efficiency. We have this notion that with the, but we didn't just put a lens in there because we wanted to create blur. We put the lens in there because it collects more light and that light makes my camera more efficient. And we understand some aspect of the consequence of that, which is depth of focus. And it turns out there's gonna be some other consequences which we also need to understand. 